So he said, hey, uh, he said, um, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was he a prophet? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, indeed, he was a prophet spoken to by Allah. Because uh, Allah spoke to Adam alayhi salam, he was a prophet. Okay. But then from another uh, narration, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the first prophet who was sent, no, his father said, this is a this is opinion of a companion. His father said that the first prophet was Idris. Okay, that the first pr prophet was Idris. Wallahu alam. Um, there is a difference in opinion whether Adam alayhi salam was indeed a prophet or not. Or whether he's, he we should be considered them as a nabi. Wallahu alam. It at the end of the day it doesn't really matter. Um, but we know that Idris. It was a prophet because he's mentioned in the Quran. And let's learn a little bit that we know about. Idris alayhi salam. And there's what we know about him is very, very, very little. Okay. Um, so let's look at the Quran actually. Why don't I have this? Okay. Yeah. Not much is known about him. Uh, again, according to certain mm, interpretations and narrations, he was born within the lifetime of Adam alayhi salam. Adam alayhi salam lived a long time lifetime wallahu alam how long he lived we don't know but he lived a long lifetime lifetime so he had many 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 children um and uh so idris alayhi salam was born during that time okay he was one of the first prophets after adam alayhi salam maybe the prophet the the prophet um uh, the first nabi after adam alayhi salam Okay. Um, remember, I told you that there was no idol worship at that time because it was all within the lifetime of Adam alayhi salam and everybody was close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what started to happen, the human, the, uh, the, uh, the devils the inside of us because shaitan never stops, right? He never stopped even... Um, even uh, uh, whispering to our father Adam and how and our mother Hawa alayhi salam, right? He he uh, enticed them as well. So that continued to happen. So Shaitan never stopped. So what kind of sins were happening around that time, starting with the the murder? It was really corrupt human actions, right? Whether it was greed, whether it was cheating people whether it was being rude or angry, whether it was as far as killing somebody, whether it was illeg illegitimate relationships, whether it was what have you, right? So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time sent down the anbiya. Anbiya don't only come to uh, against idol worship or, for, or, or worship of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? They also come to correct the uh, the character, the actions of people. For example, we will learn later on soon that Shu'aib was sent to a people that not necessarily did idol worship. Um, they also used to cheat people in what they bought and sold. So they will weigh less. You know, if somebody wanted one kg of something, they will, they will give a little bit less. Okay. No, Adam alayhi salam did not live for 60 years. Um, uh, again, uh, very little is known about his lifespan. There are some ahadith and narrations. They are a bit weak, but we understand that he lived for a long time. Okay, they, they, Part of his life was in living in Jannah, and part of his, of his life was living on earth. Okay. Okay, so back to Idris alayhi salam. So we learn from a narration that he was the first one to write with a pen. Okay, this is from Ibn Ishaq. Okay, his name in the biblical literature is Enoch. Okay, so Idris is uh, what, what the Quran calls him, but the, uh, the Hadith literature, if you look at the lineage of the prophets, his name is also Kanuch, which is almost sounds similar to Enoch. Okay, so he's, so here, uh, in the Tabaqat uh, Abi Sa'ad, that where we learned the lineage of the prophets, he says the, the first prophet who was sent was Idris, who was Kanuch. 
you know, okay, who was the son of Yarid and who was the son of Mahlail, who was the son of Qainan, who was the son of Anush, who was the son of Sheath, who, who in Bible, his name is Seth. We did not talk about him because very little is known. And who was the son of Adam, okay? All right. So the Quran has literally two verses talking about Idris alayhi salam, um, and very little is, is said about that. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that what, what type of a person he was. Let's look at that really quickly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, right after talking about Ayyub alayhi salam, who came much later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa Ismail wa Idrisa wa Dal Kifl. So Ismail, Idris, and Dal Kifl, Kullun Mina Sabirin, they were all from the extremely patient prophets. Okay, extremely patient people. Why is this coming right after the story of Ayyub alayhi salam? You guys, do you guys know Ayyub alayhi salam and uh, the story of his patience? Inshallah, we will learn soon, but I'm just curious if you knew. Probably not. Okay. The story of Ayub. Ayub, yeah, Ayub. Oh, Ayub. yes, I, I know the story. Yeah, that he was extremely sick for a long time and he was extremely patient about his sickness, right? We will go yeah. that go into much more detail about that. So right after that passage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and Ismail and Idris, and Dal Kifl, and very little is known about Dal Kifl. We'll talk about that later on. <clears throat> I'm not prepared to talk about that at this time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullun mina sabirin. They were all from the sabirin, from the patient. Wa atqalnahum fi rahmatina. And we entered them in our into our mercy. Right? A lot of times in the Quran, when mercy is mentioned, it means Jannah. Okay, and we entered them into our mercy. They were from the righteous, the extremely righteous people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives high praise to Ismail alayhi salam, Idris alayhi salam, and Dal Kifl. Okay, so this is one mention of Idris alayhi salam. There's another mention, and those are the only two mentions in the Quran, and we will come to that next. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eventually raised him up, just like Isa alayhi salam, we understand he was raised up to the skies. Idris alayhi salam was also raised up, okay? <clears throat> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, <clears throat> fil kitabi Idris and mention in the book the story of Idris innahu kana siddiqan nabiyya he was a very very honest and a prophet so this is how we know Idris alayhi salam was a prophet because the Quran is telling us he was from he was a nabi he was from the prophets okay and he was siddiqan he was extremely truthful Okay, so again, uh, extremely Quran praises Idris alayhi salam very, very highly. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَفَعْنَاهُ مَكَانًا عَلِيًّا And we raised him to a high station. Again, it's, a, it's not a very clear ayah. It is, it, uh, it, it's alluding to either he was raised in high ranks because of his, uh, because of his character, because he was honest and true and he was a prophet. And as a prophet, he's already raised in ranks. And this could also mean that he was elevated to a high, to a high, to, he was raised to, to the sky. There are some narrations which say that he actually died in, after he was elevated into the sky. Um, but if you look at the hadith of the, remember the story of Isra and Mi'raj? When Rasulullah was going through the seven heavens, the seven skies, um, he met Idris alayhi salam. So let's look at that hadith, that beautiful hadith. It's a very long one. And we will read that inshallah together just to kind of remind ourselves. And um, 
we will then call it a day, inshallah. Okay. So, everybody with me thus far? Or are people dropping? I, I don't know. Anyways. So, Malik bin Saza, this is from Bukhari. Okay, this is Hadith in Bukhari. It's authentic, Sahih. Uh, the Prophet وسلم, said, and he's talking about the story of uh, Isra and Mi'raj. So, while I was at the house, meaning I was in uh, around the Kaaba, in a state midway between sleep and wakefulness. So uh, anyway, I don't want to go into a lot of detail here. I can go in, onto a lot of tangents. So I'm going to try to avoid that right now. So we're going to go through this material. So an angel recognized me as the man lying between two men, a golden tray full of wood. Sorry about that. A golden tray full of wisdom and belief was brought to me. So Jibreel Ali Salam, he brought a tray, had wisdom and belief and Iman. Basically, hikmah and iman was brought to me and my body was cut open from my throat to the lower part of the abdomen. And then my abdomen was washed with zamzam water and, and uh, my chest was then filled with wisdom and belief with hikmah and iman. Al-Buraq, you know, the animal, Buraq, who actually took, them, took him to on the journey. Al-Buraq, a white animal, smaller than a mule and bigger than a donkey, was brought to me and I set out with Jibreel when I reached the nearest heaven when I re so this does not talk about his uh, going to this hadith does not mention him going to Masjid al-Aqsa but this talks about him being elevated up through the skies when I reached the nearest heaven which is Sama ad dunya which is the first sky everything that we see out there is considered the first sky as far as you, the Hubble telescope can see or the new uh, uh, James Webb telescope that just is deployed and inshallah we'll see the images from the James Webb I can't wait um, after you know five or six months or so I can't wait to see those first images from James Webb uh, subhanallah I don't know how many of you are astronomy buffs I'm a big, big astronomy buff um, so once we see that that's going to replace the Hubble telescope um, inshallah soon um, so as far as that telescope is able to see, that is still considered Sama ad dunya the first sky. And the whole universe that we know of, it's all Sama ad dunya It's the first sky. Okay. So as soon as I reached the Sama ad dunya the nearest heaven, Jibreel alayhi salam said to, the, said to the gatekeeper of the sky, open the gate. And the gatekeeper asked, look at the gatekeeper. He's saying, who is it? He said, it's Jibreel. The gatekeeper then asked, <clears throat> who is with you? Okay. Jibreel alayhi salam says, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam is with me. The gatekeeper said, has he been called? Has he been given an invitation? Look at that. Look at the, 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 the integrity of the job of that angel, the gatekeeper of the, of the first guy. He is doing his job. He's like, do you have an appointment? He's doing his job, even though it's Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's still asking, does he have an appointment? Look at the integrity of his job, right? And he says, yes. Then it was said, he is welcomed. What a wonderful visit his is. Then I met Adam Alayhi Salam. So this is the, in the first sky, he meets Adam Alayhi Salam and Adam Alayhi Salam greeted him and said, you are welcomed, O son and a prophet. So look, because Adam alayhi salam is his father, right? Of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi just like he is all he is all of our father. You are welcomed, O son and a prophet. Then we ascended to the second sky, and it was asked, "Who is it?" Again, the second sky has a keeper, and he's doing his job too. Who is it? And Jibril alayhi salam said, "Is Jibril?" Uh, it was then said, "Who is with you?" And he said, "It's Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. It's with me." He has he then he asked, has he been sent for? And he said yes. And it was said then he is welcomed. What a wonderful visit his is. Then on the second sky he met Isa salam and Yahya salam, Jesus and John. Okay, who said, "You are welcomed, O brother and a prophet." They called him a brother because they're not they're not from the same lineage, so they're essentially cousins in a lineage, right? Because one is from Ismail alayhi salam, one Rasulullah is from Ismail alayhi salam, and 
um, Isa alayhi salam is from Ishaq alayhi salam, Isaac, okay? Then we ascended to the third heaven and the same thing happened. The, the, the gatekeeper uh, asked who it is and said he was recalled for. And then he said, what a wonderful visit it is. And then on the third sky, we, he, he met Yusuf alayhi salam, Joseph, who greeted him. And he said, brother, same reason, because he's from the uh, lineage of Ishaq alayhi salam. Then we ascended to the fourth heaven again, and the same questions are answered um, uh, it, it is in the previous, uh, then he met Idris and greeted him. Okay. He said, you are welcomed, O brother and prophet. Then we ascended to the fifth heaven, same questions were exchanged. And then they met Harun alayhi salam, who said, you are welcome, O brother. Then we ascended to the sixth heaven. And again, the same questions were asked. And then he met Musa alayhi salam in the sixth heaven. Um, and uh, he said, you're welcome, O, uh, o brother and a prophet. When I proceeded on, he started weeping. Um, uh, when I proceeded on, he started weeping and on being asked why he was weeping, he said, O Lord, followers of this truth who was sent after me will enter paradise in greater number than my followers. So Musa alayhi salam was kind of sad that the followers of Rasulullah sallallahu would be much more than the followers of Musa alayhi salam. Anyway, so on and so forth. I, I don't want to read the whole thing here, but I wanted to point out that where is Idris alayhi salam? Where was he raised to? The fourth heaven. Okay, wallahu um, alam. Uh, there are different narrations with a little bit of conflict of which level each prophet was found. Again, this is not that they're actually there. This could, this also can mean that because time and place doesn't apply to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the, in, the, in the matters of unseen. So at that time, you know, because he saw Musa alayhi salam on earth as well, and then he saw them at the, at, at the sky. So it could be that, um, uh, since time and place don't apply, he met them, and for a reason only wisdom known only by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he saw them there. It's not necessarily so. Where is Isa alayhi salam? Where did he see Isa alayhi salam? Which, which uh, sky? Does anybody remember? Second sky, right? Second sky. So that may be where Isa, Isa alayhi salam is raised when he was raised uh, after they attempted to crucify him, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up to the second sky. And Idris alayhi salam, Quran says, he was also raised to a makanan aliya, uh, to a high station. وَرَفَعْنَاهُ makanan aliya. Okay, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, an'ama Allahu alayhim. These are the people that that are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. Meaning Nabiyina from the prophets, min dhriyati Adam from the children of Adam, wa mimman hamalna ma'anu, and who are whoever were carried in the ship of Noah. Wa min dhriyatihi Ibrahim, and from the children of Nuh is Ibrahim wa Israel wa mimman hadayna wa jtabayna, and from those who we guided and we chose. Ida tutla alayhim ayatul rahmani kharru sujjadan wa bukiya. And when our ayat are recited to them, the, the uh, uh, ayat of Ar Rahman are recited to them, they fall down in prostration and they cry. Wa bukiya. Okay, so I will leave it at that. This is an ayah of sajda. If you guys uh, want to, you can do uh, such the uh, optionally, but it's how it's recommended that you do. Any questions before we end our day? Did you guys know this about Idris alayhi salam before? Curious, I'm just curious. No. No? Okay. Yeah, only mentioned twice in the Quran. Very, very, very little is known about him. Again, this is all we're extrapolating that he is on the fourth heaven. In some narrations, he's on the seventh heaven. In some narrations, he's on the third heaven. Wallahu alam, which one is correct? Because some of the hadith narrators, the, the sahaba that were narrating or the, when the news made it to them, they might have forgotten the order. So there's a little bit of conflict, but the, he, was definitely saw, he was definitely met 
uh, during the ascension to the uh, Sidratul Muntaha. Any other questions? Wait, I have a question. Yeah. I know it might not be like useful to answer this question, but I, I kind of want to like have like a, you know, an answer for this. So like when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went on Isra Mi'raj, like when he went to this, um, to the, when he left the, the first sky mm -hmm. and entered the second one, is that like, like the like end of the known universe? Like when he like, when like he, the- We don't know, we uh, don't know. Uh, but what, how you can grapple with that mentally and completely valid to do it. You can think of them as different dimensions. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. It's completely valid to think like that because we don't know. And what does that dimension even mean? We don't even know what a dimension means. I mean, we have a word for it, but do you know what do, do, do scientists know what the word dimension actually means? No, they don't. Right. So, uh, these are this is all uh, matters of the unseen we do not know but it is definitely not in the sama dunya because the 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 sky of the nearest sky it's called the nearest sky dunya the word dunya means what a low place okay as if there are higher places that's what that's why dunya is called dunya dunya means low so what we cherish and love and we think it's the it's the end of everything and we want to make the best. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us a lowly place. It is not a high place, high as in station, high as in a grade, high as in not height, right? Don't mm -hmm. think of height. Don't think of expanse. Think of high uh, as an elevated place, okay? As an honored place. So dunya is the least honored place. It's not a place where we want to be, where you want to be for the rest of your uh, spiritual life. Our, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a high, high station, an elevated station in Jannah, which will be the rest of our spiritual life. I mean, mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Yeah.